morning, everyone. I'm really excited about today's adventures. I'm in Castle Valley outside of Moab, Utah. I've been here many times before. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. I've done a fair amount of climbing in this area. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, maybe. This is just an iconic area. This is, this is an iconic Western formation. It's called Castleton Tower. At least that's what rock climbers call it. I think a lot of other people call it Castle Rock. But I'm here to climb this today. This is called Periot Mesa or Pariot Mesa. Not quite sure the proper pronunciation of it. I've climbed this before in 2011. So it's been almost 10 years now. In November, it'll be, it'll be 10 years. And uh, this is one of my favorite adventures that I've done in the Moab area. It's a little bit more than a hike. It's mostly a hike, but then there are some little bit extra sections and that'll become clear soon enough here. Let me finish getting my backpack and gear ready and then we'll hit the trail. So this is where I'll be climbing and you might think there's no way you can just hike up that thing. And you're mostly right. I mean, that's just, you know, two or 300 foot high cliffs on all sides, but it continues around and around the corner here, there's a break in the cliffs, in the cliffs or a series of breaks in the cliffs that make it possible to, to access the summit. So that's where I'm headed, somewhere up the slope part and then around the corner and then up. Well, it was bound to happen. I think it's still focusing. Maybe. I think it's still good. Whenever I include footage of my camera falling over on the tripod, someone always says, you know, you can just weigh your tripod down with a water bottle or a sock full of rocks or, or your backpack or whatever. And yes, I know that. But remember, this isn't just a, a one-time thing. If I were setting up the tripod once a day, once every couple of days, sure, you know, that's not an issue. But you have to remember that I'm doing this dozens of times a day, day after day, and it's just not a little piece of friction that I want in my life, in my filming life. My goal with filming these adventures is to make the filming part as painless and unobtrusive as possible because the focus is the adventure and the filming of it is, is secondary. And so if I were to weigh down the tripod each and every time I set it up, it would just get so annoying to me that there's no way I'd be able to, to do it all day, every day. So I finally turned around the corner here and this is the way that the route goes up. You can see it's much less cliffy in this section. I mean, this again, this is a few hundred feet of cliffs, but this is cliffs, but it's broken up. So, you know, you have this ledge here and, and over here, and it's much 
more approachable here. So I don't remember exactly where the route goes up this way, but it goes somewhere over here. So I'm looking for a rope or a cable that goes across one of these ledges here. Maybe this one down here. I think I'm too high. I think I've gone too high. I think I need to drop back down a little bit. Okay, here we go. I've found the cable or rope. I can't quite tell yet what it is, but do you see it in there? Right in the middle. That's where I'm going. Okay, so here's the cable. It's bolted in with bolts, with anchors at each end. Goes most of the way across the ledge. There's a short section without a cable that I'll need to cross, but that's okay. And so I have my, my climbing harness on. I don't know if you can see it. And then I've got a couple of slings and carabiners that I'm gonna be clipping into the cable here. So as we, as I go across here, I'm following the cable. Then when I get to an anchor like this, I need to unclip one carabiner, clip the other one in, unclip the second one, move it to the other side of the bolt, and keep going here. Kind of like a Via Ferrata thing. If you're familiar with those in the in the Italian Alps and elsewhere, this is kind of a, a ramshackle version of that. I'm at the end of the cable here, so I'll need to cross this last little section. In the corner there, there is a, a rope in the chimney, so that's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm heading toward. I've got a helmet on, by the way. You can see it in the shadow here. Got my climbing helmet and the GoPro is attached to that. Alrighty. We've got a bolt here. Okay. But what I'm getting to is this. This is a fixed rope in the corner of the chimney. So I've got the same system here, the two carabiners with the two slings going to my harness right here. Pull my way up the rope. If you were to not use the rope, I think this would be some, some easy fifth class rock climbing, if that means anything to you. Here's looking down. Sorry if you're afraid of heights. This probably isn't the most comfortable video for you to watch. In fact, these last couple probably haven't been great for you. And by the way, I know that I actually have some viewers who live, who live here, who live in Castle Valley. 
out over this way have heard from you. In fact, I got a message from one of you, I think yesterday or the day before saying, yeah, I live in Castle Valley, come on over. I'll cook you a meal <laughs> and everything. And I really appreciate that, but I'm not meeting anyone really until I get the vaccine, until I get vaccinated, or at least I'm trying to keep that to a minimum. So anyway, I'm at the top here. Here's the anchor, bit two big fat bolts and some chains at the top. Everything looks to be in good shape. Let's continue onward and upward. So that's two of the technical sections down. I believe there are two more. Three if you include this thing right in front of me here. There's a single bolt with a rope tied onto it to give you kind of a, a handhold, something to hold onto as you make this step right here. It's really not that bad, but it doesn't hurt. I can now see the last two little steps. One is right here. There's a fixed rope in this chimney here that I can't see yet, but I know it's over there. And then I can see the final fixed rope, which is right here. It goes up that last little step. Sure enough, here's that spot in the corner, the chimney in the corner. Let me clip into it here, catch my breath a little bit, then I'll head up. Okay, I'm pointing the GoPro kind of down. Let's see if that works so you can get a look at what my feet are doing. So you can look down a little bit more with me. A chimney is what you call a crack in the rock that's essentially big enough for you to to fit inside. So this would definitely be considered a chimney. Well, that's cool. There's a hole in the rock right there. All right, and here we go. At the top, that really wasn't, wasn't too bad at all. From that chimney, it's about a 50 foot traverse over to the right here to that last fixed rope. And that's it, that's the top right there. So we're close, very, very close. Okay, last little step here. Okay, let's clip in above that first knot. Make our way up to the second one. Clip in above that. Unclip the lower one. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Just trust me that I'm not interested in, in dying quite yet. This is the top. Sweet. Here's looking down. Let's 
finish this thing off. From the top here, I'm just gonna go this way. I believe the summit is over in this direction somewhere. This looks like the summit to me. Yes. Perfect. Beautiful day. A bit windy. Too windy for good filmmaking purposes, but I'm happy to be up here. I'm kind of crouching behind these boulders up here so I can have a little bit of a wind break. But like I think I said earlier, over here, these are two or a, a few iconic rock formations. This right here in the middle, Castleton Tower or Castle Rock, I climbed that, oh, 10 or 12 years ago. And then over here, the large one in the middle is the rectory. And I have not climbed that, but I have climbed that freestanding spire off to the left. It's called the Priest. That was an awesome climb, one, one of the classic climbs of the Southwest. And then looking to the left from Castleton, the rectory and the priest, we have this. These towers here are called the Sister Superior Group, I believe. And then beyond those in the distance, let me see if I can focus in on those. out here, these are the Fisher Towers. That is one of my favorite areas in Moab. I don't think I've ever shown that in a video, but I've been there a bunch of times. I've climbed several of those towers. I think that tower right in the middle is the Titan, and I've climbed that one. That's the tallest of the towers over there. And, and there's a famous one called Ancient Art that has a corkscrew-shaped summit that is just a wild climb that I've done twice. I love being back up here. Like I said, I, I was here in 2011. More specifically, I was here on November 11th, 2011. So 11, 11, 11. But even more specifically, I was here at 11 a.m. No, at 11, 11 a.m. and 11 seconds. I took a picture of my watch up here on that day 10 years ago. 11, 11, 11 on 11, 11, 11. I still get a kick out of that whenever I think about it. I was looking at that picture about a month ago and I think that's what reignited my desire to climb this thing and share it with you guys. I'm really happy to be up here, if you couldn't tell. This is, this is great. This is bringing back a lot of great memories, not just of this adventure, but of many of my Moab adventures. I mean, looking in every direction, I can see trips and adventures that I went on, things that remind me of, of fun adventures in the past. So this is, this is a, a great little trip down memory lane for me. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time up here, enjoy myself up here, have a drink of water, and then I'll head back down. made it back down and I made it back to Moab. I'm in Moab now. Um, my camera 
has been destroyed. So on the top of Periot Mesa, uh, there was a clip of my camera falling over. Um, at least I think there was a clip of it. Maybe the clip didn't survive, but my camera fell over as I was filming. And um, let's just say it did not get back up. Uh, metaphorically speaking, it is toast. So I don't know if you can see it. See how it's kind of wonky? Like this topmost section here is slanted. It should not be like that. It should be straight like like these other like this other one here and so this camera the sony zv1 which i have had for less than a month uh <laughs> this camera is toast so I'm, I'm now recording on my old camera the canon m50 i know you guys probably don't care about all this camera drama but it's been a big part of this trip and so i'm sharing it with you Gear drama in general has been a big issue of the, on this trip. The problem with this camera is that it doesn't work when it's cold. Like if it's 50 degrees or lower, it has issues and it's been getting worse. And so that's why I have been not using this camera and I have been using this camera because you know, when I'm, when I start hiking in the morning, it's cold. And so anyway, I'm in Moab. I need to go get some groceries, some groceries that don't require refrigeration because one of the other gear issues I have is that this, let me show you this this 2000 watt portable power station that I'm that I'm testing out on this trip. It has the the dumbest feature or requirement that I've ever seen in one of these things and that is that it needs to have at least 3 solar panels hooked into it. That means that the solar panel that's on my roof can't charge this. Um, in order to charge this thing, I need to have 3 solar panels laid out on the ground in order to have it charged, which is just mind-boggling to me why that is the case. So anyway, I haven't been recharging it via solar. I can only charge it when I drive, and I haven't been driving all that much the last couple of days. So I'm rationing my usage of this thing, and that means that the food that's in my fridge is basically spoiled now. I unplugged the fridge yesterday. Again, this trip is just has just been cursed from the beginning. So anyway, I'm going to go into the store. Uh, I'm not going to film it. it, you know, it's a grocery store, who cares? And then I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to drive south of here and we'll end the day, we'll finish off the day strong um, with some other really interesting stuff and some beautiful areas, but this little middle section here where I'm in town has just gotten me all riled up and <laughs> let's just get this over with and then get back out of here. An hour or so later, I'm outside of Moab. I've parked at the base of this rock here. You might think, okay, that's a rock. There are lots of rocks in that area. What's so special about this one? Well, the special thing about this one, I think is over here somewhere. So let's go head over that way. Years ago, probably three or four years ago, I saw one picture of this rock. I've never seen another one, or I, I had never seen another one. And the picture didn't, detail didn't describe where this rock was or what it was named or anything like that. When planning this trip, I remembered that picture. I went back to it. I had saved it on Instagram. Gotta catch my breath as I'm <laughs> walking up this thing. I went back to it and someone had asked in the comments, what is that? Where is that? And the guy who posted the picture responded. He said it was jailhouse rock or jail rock or something like that. So armed with that information, I was able to find it. There's really not much information about this online. I saw basically one guy's blog post about it. But let me show it to you. Local legend has it that it's called that because it was actually used as a jail back in the day. The local sheriff or whatever, before he could take criminals to the proper jail in the area, he would put them down there. There's one more story that goes along with this rock. It is so windy, oh my gosh. Oh, 
I'm sorry, it was just too windy out there to think, let alone talk. So the second story is that a local rancher used to put his wife down in there to keep her safe whenever he went into into uh, Monticello or Moab to the to the saloon there. So who knows if those stories are true, but I thought that was pretty interesting. And um, you know, I, I would love to have shown you more up there and I want I really wanted to fly the drone and, and show you the pit from the air. I can't fly the drone in this wind though. It's it's really strong wind. It's just not smart to fly a drone in this weather. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning and I will go back up there and I will insert that footage, both from the camera and the drone. I'll insert that footage here now. And then once that footage is over, then the video of this day and of this, this part of the trip will resume, okay? So here is tomorrow morning's footage of Jailhouse Rock. Wow, future Tristan, that was great. Okay, so now I'm gonna go continue on the road here. Uh, I have about a 30 mile drive on dirt roads. So there's a road out here that goes out to an overlook called the Anticline Overlook. And I've heard about it for years, never been out there. Again, it's 30 miles, lots of driving. I don't know if the view will be worth it. Who knows, but let's head out there and find out. Also, I called that rock Jailhouse Rock. I think it's also known as Jail Rock. On the map on my phone, it's called Jail Rock, but I think on the on that website that I referred to earlier, it's called Jailhouse Rock. Either way works, I suppose. Okay, turns out the road leading out here is actually paved. It's not a dirt road. So that's nice. Should go a little bit faster then. I was driving along and saw a sign for Wine Glass Arch. And I don't know if you can see it with this camera, but it's over on the edge there. Let's hike over there and get a better look at it. There's this short little trail here that leads to the arch. So this is the Wine Glass or Wine Glass Arch. Just another great name. It's smaller than I thought it was from the road. It looked bigger. But I'd say that that opening is maybe, oh, let's say six feet high. So maybe a person could fit standing in it. That's great. What a neat little arch. And then there's another one over here that I just passed like a hundred feet ago. So here's the wine glass. Again, such a cool looking little arch. And then just right next to it, on the way to it, there's this thing. Another little arch skylight kind of deal. Well, in kind of a surprising turn of events, I'm the only one here. I was not expecting that, but like I said, this is the Anticline Overlook. I've never been here. I don't know exactly what this viewpoint is like. I'm just following this little path here. I think it'll just take a minute or two to get out to the viewpoint itself. We've got a nice little shaded viewing platform here. The sign here says Cane Creek Anticline. And it says the Anticline Overlook is named for the curved uplifted Cane Creek Anticline visible across the Colorado River to the north. So basically it's this twisted part over here. Now, obviously the thing dominating the view over in this direction are these ponds. So I, I think there's some sort of mining operation over there. These are evaporation ponds for potash. 
little bit of a blight on the landscape, but there's still some beauty over here. And again, that's the Colorado River glimmering below. There's more beautiful viewing over here. There's another little viewing platform. Let's go check that out. So yeah, looking off to the right here, this is, this is pretty spectacular. This is looking out toward Moab. Moab is, I believe, in this direction. And this valley here is the, uh, the Cane Creek Valley. I've done, I've done rock climbing out in here and I've camped out there before. Back in the day, there was all sorts of dispersed camping in this canyon. I used to camp here all the time, but now it's all paid campgrounds. You can't camp outside of the paid campgrounds. And then of course the beautiful La Salle Mountains. They get up to 12,000 feet. I don't think I'd go out of my way to drive from Moab specifically to this viewpoint. But the drive as a whole is beautiful and, and with going to, to Jail Rock and then also to the Arch and you know, there are other little stops and viewpoints along the way. I think the trip as a whole is worth it. This was fun. You know what time it is. It's campsite time. Let's go find a place to spend the night. Well, it took me a little while, but I found a really fantastic campsite. Let me show it to you. And it is still really windy, so I apologize for the wind noise. But I'm on the edge of this canyon here. Beautiful. Beautiful canyon. It's not really pleasant to be outside when it's this windy and when the wind carries with it sand. Uh, I mean, my, like I can taste the sand in my mouth, I can feel the sand in my mouth, it's all in my hair. Um, it's not, not super pleasant being out here. So I'm gonna get inside for the night. I'm just gonna have a peanut butter sandwich for dinner and then relax a little bit. Great day. Uh, well, is that true? I'm happy with the things that I did. I'm not happy about the camera issues. I'm not happy about breaking my less than one month old camera. But overall, it was a good day, and uh, I'll give you one last look at this great campsite here. If the wind dies down by morning, I will fly the drone in the morning and insert that drone footage here so you can see this area from above. Well, friends, there's been an abrupt change of plans. So it's the next day, and the plan for today was to kind of have a rest day, kind of take it easy, see a couple of things, maybe shoot some some footage, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, but the plan was to go into Grand Junction, Colorado to see if I could replace my, this camera, my broken new camera. I bought it from Best Buy, and so I wanted to come to the Best Buy here in Grand Junction, Colorado to see uh, what the replacement process was like. I thought maybe there's a chance that they can just like take a look at it and replace it on the spot or give me, you know, give me a, a new one on the spot or something like that. I do have the extended warranty, the extended extra coverage for this. So I was hoping for that. Turns out that's not how it works. Uh, it's gonna be at least a couple weeks before I can get this thing replaced. Which means that I have to do all of my filming on this camera, my old camera. But this camera does not work when it's cold. When Even at this point when it's below like 50 degrees, it doesn't want to work. It is going to be below 50 degrees the next few days in the places I wanted to go. And so I thought, you know what? Everything is against me. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to cut my losses. I had a great trip. And, uh, you know, I'll finish off the rest of the trip at, at a later date. I'll leave that for future adventures. So I'm leaving the desert now. I'm gonna drive about seven and a half hours home today. I'm gonna to try to do all of it in one go. And uh, yeah, kind of a, a trip full of things going wrong. A lot of things went wrong on this trip. Uh, and that's a mixture of testing out new gear and then also just bad luck. And you know, it happens on the road, but I still had a good time. I still enjoyed the trip. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this series of videos. I think I made I don't know, five or six videos from this trip, so I'm happy with that. Again, hope you enjoyed the trip, hope you enjoyed these videos, hope you enjoyed this video. 
Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your favorite part was. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully I'll have ironed out all of these little these little uh, camera details and other problems that have been uh, been nagging at me on this trip. So see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.